Hi John, thank you for agreeing to take part. Could you please start by explaining your background and your current role? Um, yeah, my background is um, I've sort of worked in the NHS all my professional life as a as a doctor, first as a GP and um, more latterly as a um, epidemiologist and public health specialist um, and also as a um, university academic. Um, in terms of um, the sort of relevance to um, activities with with um, medicines management, etc., I was the medical director of a large health authority for about 10 years, so um, I sort of have some insight into the challenges of uh, of sort of um, the economic side of healthcare. And what, in your opinion, are the key challenges faced by NICE, especially given the pressures of the current economic climate? Well, I mean, I think um, the role of NICE and other organisations is, um, is, you know, I suppose twofold, really. I mean, it's there. I mean, medication and technologies sort of enter the healthcare market, gaining their product licences, but. Um, Generally, um, that's based on 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 sort of demonstrating uh, no harm and potential benefit. I think where Nice fits in is about um, actually uh, seeing where the clinical effectiveness and how that feeds into the cost effectiveness of uh, technologies and therapies uh, will impact on the uh, on the sort of uh, healthcare arena. And I think over the next coming years with the sort of uh, the current and projected um, economic growth figures, then obviously economic evaluation of new therapies is going to be very important. I think the other factor is, of course, the change in demographic in westernized countries like the UK, where, you know, we've got an ever increasing aging population with um, increases in chronic disease. And that, again, is going to put additional pressures on a uh, in percentage terms, dwindling um, taxpaying workforce. Sure. And how does the health outcomes research actually shape the treatment landscape for patients further down the line? Well, I, I mean, I think the whole issue around health outcomes research is that it's not just looking about the um, use of the drug in its sort of pharmacological setting, i.e., you know, an antihypertensive drug dropping your blood pressure. It's actually, um, you know, what does that actually do to um, real-world meaningful outcomes? And in the case of blood pressure, it's, you know, present, prevention of strokes and heart heart disease, really. And, um, and I think health outcomes evaluation um, tries to at least um, breathe some real-world... Um, findings into into the sort of bridging the gap between the idealized world of randomized controlled trials through to how does this uh, work in the real world and what difference does it make. And how do you see an aging population and current medical improvements impacting on patient demographics? Well, I mean, I think, um, you know, there's potentially a perfect storm brewing, isn't there, in terms mm -hmm. of... Uh, You've got um, potentially dwindling resources. You've got a an aging population that um, you know the fast fastest growing sector of the population of the in percentage terms as the over hundreds, um, followed by the over nineties, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And of course the um, congregation of chronic diseases in in those age groups. Um, and you know I think general gains in public health you know, better lifestyle, nutrition, etc., combined with the uh, efficacious uh, impact of uh, of medicines is making making a huge difference uh, and a huge pressures on Western Western countries to afford health care. I mean, an example is obviously uh, cancers. You know, survival cancer rates have grown dramatically over the last few years, and um, you know the we're getting into the arena where we're turning um, cancer from lethal diseases into chronic diseases where people die from other causes. And uh, I think that's a real challenge for, um, for health care of the future. 
And with the proposed UK healthcare reform, where do you think we will end up and what role will, the, will healthcare technology assessment play in the new landscape? Well, I mean, I, I think that, um, I mean, the UK healthcare reforms, which principally apply to England, uh, Scotland, Ireland and uh, Wales have, um, you know, are divergent in the way they're reforming their healthcare. But if we take the the English model where you're, you're looking at um, putting um, GPs into the front line of uh, of uh, decision makers for for the provision of health care and uh, you're opening up the market to private providers of health care then basically what we're going to see is we're going to be seeing um, a much more commercialization of health care in the future I mean I think the other side of the coin is I think the doing nothing option is uh, is probably not an option at all and uh, I think even in countries such as Wales um, and Scotland, where they haven't gone down this um, this uh, commissioner uh, provider split in healthcare, um, the challenge over the next few years is to um, see how intact the NHS can be. You know, um, universal care, free at the point of access uh, for all, is uh, I think going to be a real challenge with the changing demographic we talked about, the increasing cost of new technologies. Um, and the new innovations that are coming downstream. And in what ways have you seen pharma adapt its development processes to account for increasing cost-effectiveness assessment? Well, I, I mean, I think the... Um, I, I mean, the, the thing that always strikes me about uh, the, the pharma industry is the incredible amount of money which has continually got to be driven into into innovation and uh, and adaption to to find new um, new products i mean what is it about a, a, a billion pounds for for each new uh, new drug that comes to market and uh, and so i think the the whole landscape is going to be challenged in the pharma industry in that um because you've got long uh, lead-in times before drugs are discovered through to um, end of clinical trials to license that impacts greatly on the um, on the length of time that they can recoup their investment I think yeah. me too drugs um, or drugs with very similar profiles will probably not in the new world be um, as commonplace as, as in the old because I think uh, to just bring out another drug which will be second, third or fourth line choice with little added benefit will not get the recommendation and endorsements of NICE necessarily or won't necessarily penetrate the market. So I think that the adaption for the pharma industry is about how does it actually find um, the higher hanging fruit because most of the lower hanging fruit has been found now and how does it actually present that into the um, into this ever-changing healthcare landscape we talked about with, um, you know, multiple providers of healthcare, often with um, answerable not only to the taxpayer but also to to potentially shareholders. So I think the world of the future is going to be quite an interesting place, really. And how can the pharma industry and cost-effectiveness bodies such as NICE work together to balance the needs of chronic disease sufferers compared with patients with acute diseases? I mean, I think that the challenge for the pharma industry and for bodies such as NICE and for national governments is to recognise that, um, um, you know, it costs more and more each year to find new drugs and new therapies. And uh, and if innovation is going to continue, then um, the people need to work together to actually uh, define um, how how new products, when they are discovered, are going to be brought into into the marketplace and used for the benefit of all. Um, obviously, from a farmer industry point of view, then chronic diseases um, are, by their very nature, more expensive to treat. And that, uh, yep. um, you know, it, it often with many diseases, it's lifelong therapies. And so I think it's really quite important that... Um, you know, at early stages in, in drug development processes that um, pharma industry uh, discusses this with with national bodies because um, if they don't, then they could well end up with, 
with high development costs for uh, with no marketplace to to uh, use the drugs and i mean i think that's the that's the challenge that are faced by many products that can be found nice in his work john thank you very much for your time and for your insights